What is semi-Pelagianism? According to the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church, semi-Pelagianism, quote, maintained that the first steps toward the Christian life were ordinarily taken by the human will, and that grace supervened only later. The Evangelical Dictionary of Theology explains that the term semi-Pelagianism first appeared in 1577 to describe the 5th century view which rejected Pelagian theology and respected Augustine, but rejected some of the implications of his views. 5th century semi-Pelagians affirmed that the unaided will performed the initial act of faith. The pivotal issue in semi-Pelagian theology is the priority of the human will over the grace of God in the initial work of salvation. Volume 1 of Integrative Theology states that the semi-Pelagians claimed sinners make the first move toward salvation by choosing to repent and believe. Also, quote, the semi-Pelagian scheme of salvation thus may be described by the statement, quote, I started to come and God helped me, end quote. One more definition, this one from a reform perspective, will be provided in order to reinforce the argument that there is a broad consensus on the term semi-Pelagianism. The Westminster Dictionary of Christian Theology defines semi-Pelagianism as follows, quote, a term which has been used to describe several theories which were thought to imply the first movement toward God is made by human efforts unaided by grace, end quote. Traditional Southern Baptist, sometimes referred to as provisionism, outright deny this perspective. We teach that God created mankind as responders, and God is always the initiator in the process leading up to our salvation. God's gracious initiative always precedes man's response on provisionism. Always. Dr. Adam Harwood, in the Journal of Baptist Theology and Ministry, wrote the traditional statement in no way prioritizes the human will over the grace of God in the initial work of salvation. You can find the link to this article in the show notes, along with other articles supporting this perspective. Even critics of provisionism, like Lutheran pastor Dr. Jordan Cooper, confess that the label semi-Pelagianism introduced in the 16th century is polemical, and that even leading scholars admit it is not really the best term to use. I'll read these first two. Highly recommend all of these. So if you want a good overview of what the controversies are about, recommend these to everybody. Um, I mentioned them on the podcast before. Yeah, so really, really good stuff. Anyway, what you find here, though, is he's using the term semi-Pelagian. He's not a Calvinist. He's not engaging in 16th century polemics. He's Roman Catholic. But he recognizes that there is a controversy about semi-Pelagianism. Now, he does say, make qualifications in his work, that semi-Pelagianism is, you know, kind of not really the best term to use. <laughs> and I think everyone, um, yeah, everyone kind of recognizes that semi-Pelagianism was somewhat polemical, just in that of course, you're using the name of a condemned heretic, Pelagius, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that the term itself doesn't refer to an identifiable movement. Like, whether the term itself is the best term that could have been used, it's the term we've got. The term we got refers to those who believe mankind initiate the process by which we are saved, something provisionists outright deny. And the term is attached to a known heretic, which is intentionally polemical. This validates our view that the label is primarily a boogeyman fallacy. This is a certain type of argument, which in fact is not an argument, but a means of forestalling discussion and erroneously labeling an opponent's position with that of a known heresy so as to demonize and discredit it. For example, someone in a debate might say, look, his view sounds like something Hitler said once, so you shouldn't listen to him anymore. Hitler is a known boogeyman, a bad character. So if I can associate my opponent's views with that of Hitler, then I'll discredit him altogether. Likewise, Pelagius has become the go-to boogeyman, 
and many will stop at nothing to slap that label on their theological opponents, regardless of whether that label rightly characterizes their actual views. This method bears a certain resemblance to the ad hominem fallacy and comes from the same root motivation, discredit and marginalize the person and their views rather than objectively evaluating and offering a sound, non-fallacious, biblical rebuttal. The ad hominem fallacy consists of attempting to refute an argument by impeaching the character of its proponent, whereas the boogeyman fallacy seeks to associate an argument with that of someone whose character or beliefs has already been impeached. This would be like an Arminian calling Dr. Albert Moeller a semi-hyper-Calvinist on the basis that he teaches something similar to that of known hyper-Calvinists. This is pure guilt by association, and it is the lazy man's approach to avoid an otherwise rational and informed discussion of the issues. Those who resort to such tactics either do not know any better, or they are nefariously attempting to marginalize and demonize the views of those who disagree with them. If provisionist or traditional Southern Baptists can rightly be labeled semi-Pelagian, then by that standard we could conclude that the Lutherans and Calvinists are, quote, semi-Gnostic. After all, those were the two groups promoting the extremes of both views in the 4th and 5th centuries. Personally, I would rather avoid such demonizing labels altogether and actually practice the principle of sola scriptura, scripture alone rather than appealing to ancient Catholic labels created by men who were known for their often violent and extreme intolerance of dissenting views, how about we approach each other with patience, kindness, and good intentions? Let us not repeat the mistakes of those who led the church into the Inquisition and other horrific abuses of dissenters, but instead set a better example for theological discourse to all who come after us. Thanks for attending our online university classroom. Remember, this is a listener-supported ministry, so please consider becoming a patron of the podcast by donating online. Join our team and help spread the word. For more resources, books, and articles from Professor Flowers, or to learn how you can support this ministry, please visit www.soteriology101.com.